Hi, welcome to um, a little bit of a different video style. You're looking at my 3D printer closet. This is where I keep my printer. Well, it's where I started keeping my printer within the last two weeks. I built this enclosure using stuff I could buy at the hardware store and just a handful of 3D printed components, build an enclosure so that I can start trying to print more finicky materials and materials that are a little bit more challenging to print at home. Something, some things like ABS, ASA, nylon. To do that, you need an enclosure. So I'll put in some footage of what my printing closet looked like before. You may notice that currently the printer is not in here. It's over on my table. We'll take a look at it in a minute. Um, but let's zoom in and take a look at some of the different design elements. These are the pieces that actually hold all of the structure together. And they are just simple little corner brackets. Um, each one of these um, is printed out of PLA Plus. This is Inland Silver PLA Plus. Um, and they're really simple. They're just four screws in each corner. You can see on this one. So each of these corners just has four screws, so two on each side, just to hold everything square. And it was really simple to just take two drywall screws in each side, so four per corner. There are, I think, 14 corners. No, I was right, 14 of these pieces. So a total of 28 screws. Um, and then I also use these drywall screws to attach the bottom, the top, and these sides. The top and bottom of this enclosure are made out of MDF. Um, the sides right now are made out of masonite, sometimes called hardboard. Um, when I worked in the theater, they called this masonite. This stuff's cheap, it's readily available. Um, same for MDF. The main frame of this enclosure is actually made out of these two inch by two inch furring strips. They're about one and a half inches by one and a half inch. So one and a half inch square. And I use that for the frame. Again, super cheap. You may be wondering about the front of the enclosure, which I don't have on here, um, I'm gonna make that out of acrylic. And instead of going out and buying just like brand new acrylic everywhere, um, I have been on the lookout to get some secondhand acrylic. So looking at places like Marketplace, Craigslist, uh, I hope to get and replace these three sides with acrylic um, that I can basically pull out of a dumpster. So either it's free or cheap, or it's just pulling it out of a landfill. Why did I decide to use furring strips? instead of something like um, aluminum extrusion or um, a printed enclosure, fully printed enclosure or something like that, um, I decided to use furring strips mainly because of their cheapness and their availability. Printing, in my opinion, printing large pieces in one dimension is a waste of time. Straight material is easy and cheap to come by. So printing it all the time is, kind of expensive and really slow. If I want to print 16 feet of a straight member, that's going to take days to print. One of your printers, if you have more, more than one, which I don't, is tied up for that whole time. You can't do anything with it. So you're just kind of waiting. So that's why I think printing long straight stock material is kind of a waste of time in my opinion. So that's why I used furring strips. Um, I went away from aluminum for basically the cost reason and the ease of working with this. Aluminum, while you can work with it with wood tools, is much more annoying. And it's best contained to a shop, which I don't have easy access to. So that's why wooden furring strips. We're gonna go over to the table where the printer that goes here is right now. So let's go. Here's my printer. Right now it is over here because I am doing some modifications to get it to fit into the enclosure a little bit better. Um, I used to have a separate enclosure that sat next to my printer. Well, actually it sat on that side, which housed the PSU, the motherboard, and then a Raspberry Pi 3, um, which runs Clipper. I used to have undermount enclosure uh, printed thing on the back here, and I really loved that. Um, but it started to become annoying when I was trying getting better at Clipper and I was getting into the motherboard a lot more. And it just kind of got to be a hassle to have to pull the bed forward and like get back there with an Allen wrench to take the lid off. 
and, and, and reach around to get everywhere. Um, so I decided to take that off and I had it sitting next to it in an enclosure. I'll put a picture here if I have one. I think I do. Um, and then a link to the model probably in the description. Um, I loved that. It was great. Um, I did have to modify it for the Big Tree Tech. I'll put a remix of that up um, for anyone who's using the same board as I am because I really liked that. It was nice. Um, but now there's just not enough space in my enclosure, which I think is going to be um, the driving issue that I will run into with my enclosure um, is just having enough space. And it does fit, but it's tight, which I don't love. So I, I am moving the electronics back under the printer so that I have more space. I figure if I'm trying to clean everything up, I might as well put the PSU back under the printer. I have designed and printed, let me grab it, heavily inspired by the teaching tech undermount enclosure, um, my own uh, front mount enclosure. So it's gonna go on the front basically where this is, but it's gonna go facing right side up. Um, and I'm gonna put the motherboard and the pie here and they'll connect and everything. And then in front of that, the uh, trident ender skirt. So this is gonna go right on the front uh, and this is gonna cover up the uh, front of everything. Keep my fingers out of the electronics and I've got this. Uh, this is also PLA inland silver. And then this is Elegoo PLA. This is just standard PLA. Um, I like this filament. My partner did say the first time I showed it to her, it looks like a doctor's scrubs. So, um, maybe not what you're going for, but I think the, the color combo is nice. I like it. Sorry. I don't think I'm going to record the whole process because I have to edit that. Then if I record the whole thing, I have to edit it. Um, so we'll come back when it's done. I've got my electronics remounted. I've got my PS3 U remounted. I need to swap out some screws and print some covers. It's a project, not a tool. So I'm gonna move this over into the enclosure and we can take a look at how it fits and talk about some of my future plans for the enclosure. There we go. You can see my Deco fast action keyboard over there, um, which I do plan to clean up and restore at some point and make a video. But here is the printer in the enclosure. This is how I'm running now. Um, I just have to turn everything back on and we should be ready to roll. Obviously I still have to print covers for this because just having these wires out, it's not great. If anybody wants to send me a CAN bus board for the hot end, I'll take one because this is insane. This is nuts. I'll put, I think an Instructables post about um, how I built the enclosure as well as printables files for these. That's my enclosure. Ooh, I should talk about some future plans I have for the enclosure. So for the enclosure, I do plan to put my Raspberry Pi camera back on here um, so I can get some time lapses and everything. I have this light right now, which is fine. It's a little dark if I close the doors and look through the camera, but I have some other lights that I may plan to mount to this top of the enclosure. I'm struggling with the doors a lot. Um, so let me know your comments about doors down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. You get to see when I post first. Thanks for watching. Bye.